welcome back to Artful Badgering. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make medieval period gouache using gum arabic and several other ingredients. Here are the items that I've used to create gouache, but you don't need everything here. At the very least, what you will need is some color pigment, calcium carbonate or chalk, gum arabic, and then a flat surface like my palette and a palette knife or some other tool to mix it evenly. I'm going to start out by working with this yellow ochre. Yellow ochre is a very period color and it's also easy to work with because essentially it's nothing but yellow clay. However, because it's clay it does like to clump together because it does retain a little bit of moisture even in its powdered form. So I'm going to start by using my palette knife to crush all of the larger lumps in the yellow ochre. Remember that even though this is nothing but clay, it's still very important to wear a breathing mask so that you don't get any of the dust particles in your lungs. Now I'm going to make a well in the middle of the powdered pigment pile into which I'm going to be dropping the liquid components. I'd like to be able to tell you that there's an exact measurement for how much of each ingredient to use, but unfortunately this is more of an art than it is a science. Period recipes call for one of two binding agents to create gouache. Generally the first is an egg layer and I've already covered how to make egg layer in a previous video but I'm not going to use that in this video for a number of reasons I prefer to use gum arabic. I find that gum arabic generally rehydrates a little bit better and preserves the paint a little bit longer. Also, some pigments can create a bubbly type of effect when mixed with egg glair. So what I've just done is add six drops of gum arabic. And if you want to only use gum arabic to make your gouache, that's fine. You can do that. That's the only ingredient that you'll need. You simply put the gum arabic in and mix it all up. However, I'm going to be adding some more ingredients to help preserve the shelf life of my paint. Because I don't paint every day, Sometimes my paint has to set for a few weeks, and the longer I can keep it fresh and usable, the happier I am. So in order to keep the paint fresh, the ingredients that I'm going to be adding, aside from gum arabic and water, are going to be honey, a little bit of vegetable glycerin, and a tiny drop of clove oil for preservation. For a pile of pigment this size, I start out by adding six drops of gum arabic and six drops of distilled water. So equal parts gum arabic and equal parts distilled water. Next I add half as much honey. So if I added six drops of gum arabic, I'll only add three drops of honey. I always start out with less liquid ingredients than I know that I'll need. Because each pigment reacts very differently to the liquid ingredients, some pigments may require more liquid while others will require less. As you can see, this yellow ochre is going to need a little bit more and thus begins the process of adding honey and gum arabic and water until we can produce a creamy consistency. This requires you to do a lot of mixing and add a little bit at a time. What you don't want is to make your pigment powder runny and overly liquid. I've also added into this mixture one drop of vegetable glycerin and one drop of clove oil. The vegetable glycerin will help the gouache retain moisture so that it's easier to reconstitute with water, very much like commercially purchased gouache tubes. While the clove oil helps prevent any mold from growing in the paint and helps with antibacterial properties as well. So we're going to start mixing all this together, making sure that there are no lumps or clumps of pigment in the mixture. If it seems like it's a little too thin or creamy at this point, that's okay because we still need to add the calcium carbonate or chalk into the mixture which will also thicken the mixture. If we stopped at this point we would have just made watercolor. The only difference between watercolor and gouache is that watercolor contains chalk. The chalk serves an important purpose because it makes gouache more opaque whereas watercolor remains more transparent. 
Just like with the liquid components, the amount of chalk necessary to produce the proper consistency is also going to depend on the behavior of the pigment. Unfortunately, there is no exact measurement. However, I find that it's usually good to start with about a fourth or a fifth as much chalk as you have pigment. As you mix it in, you'll quickly be able to tell whether or not it needs a little bit more. It's always easy to add more, but once it's mixed in, you can't take it out. So start off small and add more as you need. The addition of the chalk to the gouache may slightly lighten the color of the gouache, and that's okay. Just try not to add too much so that the color isn't altered significantly. There are two ways to know if you've added enough chalk to your gouache mixture. The first, unfortunately, is through experience because the chalk adds a certain body to the pigment in the paint and you'll be able to tell whether or not there's enough chalk as you continue to experiment with different pigments. However, the best way to tell whether or not you've added enough chalk to the gouache mixture is by taking a sample of it and simply painting it on a scrap sheet of paper to see if the paint is more translucent, like a watercolor, or more opaque, like a proper gouache. As I continue to mix up the yellow ochre, I'm confident at this point that I've added the appropriate amount of chalk. As I mix it up, you can tell that the body of the paint is very close to that of commercially produced gouaches. The consistency that you're looking for is something along the lines of a thicker lotion. However, it should never be gritty or dry. It should spread out very smooth, very evenly, and almost, in my opinion, kind of looks like an oil paint if any of you have any experience working with oil paints. Yellow ochre is an exceptionally easy pigment to work with. You can also get green ochre and red ochre. Again, ochre is nothing but highly colored clay, so you don't have to worry about it having any lead or copper components or anything that might be harmful to work with. And I recommend that if you've never played with pigments before, that's a really good place to start. Now we're going to play with some other pigments to see how they behave and react with the water, gum arabic, and honey mixture. This pigment is a ivory black, sometimes called bone black, and it's created by charring bone or ivory and then taking the charcoal substance. The texture of this is very lightweight and very powdery, so this is not a pigment that you want to play with if it is a very windy environment or anything like that because this stuff will go airborne very easily which makes it incredibly important to continue to wear your face mask when you work with it. Unlike the yellow ochre that seemingly would just drink up the liquid substances added to it, the ivory black powder pigment is not quite as easy to work with and needs to be mixed a little bit. I wouldn't say that it's hard to work with, it's just not quite as easy as the ochres are. To make the bone black, I followed the same structure as I did when making the yellow ochre. Six drops of water, six drops of gum arabic, and three drops of honey. Mixing that all together and then finally adding the chalk. Remember, the glycerin and the clove oil are entirely optional. Now I'm going to stop talking for a few minutes and just let you enjoy watching the mixing process. I have to admit that there is something exceptionally satisfying about mixing these things together.
this lovely color here is ultramarine. Ultramarine is made by crushing lapis lazuli stones and then separating the different colors that result. The more brilliant stones are a higher quality um, and a richer blue, while the duller stones mixed with more white parts of the stone are going to be a duller blue and less expensive. This pigment is an absolute dream to work with. It doesn't take a whole lot of liquid. Again, I started off with the 663 drop ratio and only had to add a few extra drops. It doesn't need much, unlike the yellow ochre where I continually had to go back and add more and more and more. But let's go ahead and just watch how this is mixed together. And notice that I did add a little bit more chalk to this one than I did the previous colors because this type of blue has a tendency to be a little bit more transparent than a lot of other colors. Next up is titanium dioxide. Titanium dioxide, unlike the previous pigments we've played with, is not a period pigment. However, it is used in place of a period pigment called lead white, which is made of lead and can be really dangerous and toxic to work with. So titanium dioxide is a commonly accepted substitute for that. And the good thing is that it's non-toxic and it's a naturally occurring oxide of titanium and can be found in several different minerals. However, even though it's non-toxic, again, still wear your face mask to avoid breathing the dust. We're going to follow the same 663 mixing ratio. And if you notice when working with titanium dioxide, even after you put the chalk in, it almost seems to be a little greasy and that's normal. Just continue to work with it until it works itself into a smooth consistency. And now time for more mixing. And that brings me to the conclusion of this video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And if you'd like to see more videos or have any requests, please leave a comment. You can subscribe by clicking the bell beside the notifications button. And I hope to see you next time. Thanks.